Perfect. So I have the duty to give the last talk of the day. So after when you survive this talk, you're all free and can relax. So I want to present you some recent results um, which we observed in our quantum simulator, so trapped ion quantum simulator. And I'm presenting on behalf of Lata. Unfortunately, she couldn't make it to come to the conference, but I hope you're also happy with me. And yes, so in the title are already two buzzwords, like quantum and PEMBA effect. Maybe part of you are familiar with the PEMBA effect. So we are observing the quantum and PEMBA effect in our quantum simulator. Okay. Let me start to first motivate the Impemba effect. So here the basic idea is that hot water freezes faster than cold water. And so Impemba himself brought this um, phenomenon back to the modern science. So in the original paper, he was, it's very funny written, like a story. Um, he observed it when he wanted to make ice cream. So um, first he had very hot milk, so he heated the milk up, put it in the freezer, and then observed that um, the milk freezes faster than initially not so hot milk. And he reproduced it also with water, but um, this phenomenon becomes then a bit uh, controversial in the um, scientific world because lots of groups were not so really um, able to reproduce this effect, and in the end, it came down that it depends on a lot of different parameters, like um, the purity of the water, like the container, and the fridge, everything else. So, but I want to bring you this um, content to effect now to the quantum world. And here it states then, the more the system is out of the equilibrium in the beginning, it um, relaxes faster. And specific for our system, so a spin one half um, trapped ion quantum simulator, is um, the symmetry restoration can happen more rapidly when an initial state shows a greater degree of symmetry breaking in the beginning. And what I'm looking here is a, a subset of um, our full many bodies state. And doing a quench we can observe that the symmetrization of the subset can um, happen faster. So um, first I want to introduce you a measure to measure this um, degree of asymmetry, and that is the entanglement asymmetry. So let's assume some uh, charge operator which generates uh, U1 symmetry, and I'm talking here um, always then now in the reduced um, state, so we can bring it also in the uh, subsystem, this charge operator, and also look on the reduced density matrix of a state. So if we have a symmetric state, so it uh, commutes with this charge operator and it's diagonal in the eigenbasis of the charge operator, so block diagonal. If we now have a symmetric broken, broken state, we have a lot of um, off-diagonal um, elements. And the team of Pascale Calabrese introduced then a quantifier for the amount of symmetry bro bro um, broken. And um, it's called the entanglement asymmetry. So here we look on the second order Rene entropy of the asymmetric state and the difference to its um, symmetric counterpart. So the symmetric counterpart is a state which is projected um, to the charge operator. And as a relative um, entropy, it also has some, some nice property. So it tends to go to zero for a, so it is actually zero for a symmetric state. So after this theoretical introduction, I want to um, introduce you our quantum simulator. So, um, ah no, first, sorry, I have an example. So um, if you look now on um, set rotations, the ferromagnetic state is symmetric under this set rotations. And if we now look on a tilted ferromagnet, so this breaks the U1 symmetry. Coming now to our quantum simulator, so um, similar to Matthias, we are working on um, trapped ion quantum simulator. So we are um, using a linear power trap where we confine uh, the ions in a linear string. So we are working in a 
one D ion chain, not in a two D ion chain, and we have the uh, um, the calcium forty ions. And we encode our absurdus spin one half system into energy levels of the calcium forty. So one in the S one half, so that's the down state or the zero state, and the other one in the D five half state, which is then the um, up state, and we can address or manipulate this qubit using a narrow line with um, 729 nanometer laser, um, which can spring it either in the down or up state or in some superposition state. And additionally, um, as Matthias presented, we have also the readout laser with them. We can then um, see if the qubit or the ion is either in the S one half state or in the D for five half state. And this happens also with all with a global laser. And this global laser we can also then use to generate entanglement. I think we, I don't have to go again now too much in the detail, but the basic idea is we have a bichromatic light laser beam, which is detuned from the radial modes of the ions, because they are in a quantum harmonic oscillator. They have normal modes. And um, when I detune the laser, from this mode, what happens, actually, I can couple the internal degrees of freedom, like the electric state, to the motional degrees of freedom, and um, effectively generate now this um, Ising-type Hamiltonian. And with an approximated um, power law decaying spin-spin interaction, and this, um, the range can be varied by um, detuning the laser more from the most. So, um, yeah. When I now center line detune these two tones, or um, like doing an asymmetric detuning from the radial modes, um, I have a generate a very strong um, uh, sigma set rotation and can perform the rotating wave approximation and can then the, this XY Hamiltonian. Um, of the I uh, introduced to these um, entanglement methods we are using here. I come now to um, how can we measure like something, the entropy or the entanglement asymmetry. So therefore, we use the, the randomized measurement toolbox and the shadow tomography. So we additionally have like um, an AOD, which can individually steer off the whole ion string and manipulate each um, qubit individually. This allows us then to uh, perform unitary operations over the old ion string. Additionally, with um, global rotations or around X and Y and uh, local rotations around Z, which are done by the um, acoustro-optical deflector, um, we are able to do arbitrary rotations around this block sphere in the block sphere picture. And uh, for the regime you see on the side, so we prepare first some initial state, perform then this arbit random unitary operations, and measure them in the measurement basis, in our case a set basis, and collect then um, a bit strings which says if the qubit is in the up or in the down state for each individual unitary operator. And with these bit strings, we can do now a shadow tomography. So we collect all these bit strings and can construct for each bit string now um, the classical shadow of the re reduced density matrix. So we map it back then to the unitary rotation we performed um, for each individual subset and each individual um, unitary operator. And this is um, classical shadow we, uh, allows us now to um, estimate higher polynomials of the reduced density matrix or even then like entanglement asymmetry or rainy entropy. Okay, so I introduced yeah, the setup and I'm directly come now to the results. So what we first did, we have now this um, XY Hamiltonian and this conserves the magnetization, so the total magnetization sigma set and um, which generates a U1 symmetry, also the magnetization in our case, case is this charge operator. And when we now prepare a tilted ferromagnet in our state, so we prepare the ions in some superposition state, we can really see that the entanglement asymmetry is uh, strongly broken for a tilt of about pi, pi half, but for the maximized polarized state, so it means the ferromagnetic states up or down with tilt angle zero or pi, we have uh, no Symmetry broken 
state in the subsystem. And also, as you can see, we have the same shape for different kind of subsystems of our 12 um, qubit string. And now, if we evolve this state on our quench, like on our x, y interaction, let it, let it um, interact. And we see directly then uh, the symmetry, symmetry restores during the quench. But the, the more interesting part here is really if we have initially a stronger broken symmetry for the tilt angle is 0 0.5, which also means like the preparing, preparing the X state in a Bloch sphere picture, the symmetrization happens more rapidly than compared to um, states which uh, have not so much broken symmetry initially. And um, yeah. This can be seen a bit in a quasi-particle picture when we look on the charges. The most symmetric broken state has um, way more charge fluctu fluctuations. And it technically means also that it occupies more uh, faster modes, which leads to this relaxation um, and pushes the charges towards the bond. So this state symmetrizes. And additionally, we looked also then, because we have dephasing in the system, and the dephasing or decoherence dephasing. Uh, do you have already some questions? Maybe we can, because also I have to take the flight immediately after this talk, so I cannot wait too long. How yes. Did you find rho of a q and did you give the definition? Yes, it's um, like the um, it's, uh, the um, retrace uh, the second part out of the total state. It's like. And this the q when you had the q as well. Yeah, the q is like the the sum over that. To the substates. Well, it has A and B. Yeah, A and B, I think, yeah, for the difference. Yeah? Well, uh, as you said, like for the case of hot water, it depends on so many parameters. Like sometimes the, like it freezes faster, sometimes. And sub sorry. Yeah, I was that Oh, even worse, yeah. Um, ah, perfectly. So maybe uh, quickly just continue with your question because we okay. uh, so we don't mix it. Um, so yes, for different states, uh, you, you have to look, and we can investigate it on because. It's uh, really new, I think. So you can see, look on different configurations where it really happens in Bradman. Let me mute this one so it doesn't yell at you. Uh, 
but um, don't cross through all the um, initial tilt angles, um, experience the same synchronization. And also, in that instance, you see a simulation, so we are not, not faking, but for the very, also for the very long time of video recursion time And I, I already come to the final slide, so um, additionally, we had a second measure which we are able to construct from the um, shadow tomography with uh, the state distance. So we uh, look on the state and measure the distance to the final tomography state, which we try to calculate. So it's like on um, the xy um, basis. And also, here you can see a faster atomization uh, of the initial. Um, as more asymmetric say compared to all the previous And with this, it's already over. So I uh, summarize and introduce the next measure um, which we're using for um, the entanglement asymmetry, so the amount of flow symmetry in this um, substate. And then, uh, yeah, the cap some capabilities of our quantum simulator. and. The, the randomized measurement toolbox, and then finally the quantum and Pember effects, so the reservation and thermalization of the state. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for the talk. Um, we still have time for questions, so please feel free to raise your hand. Uh, I think I maybe missed it. Like, it, should I understand this as a Hamiltonian effect or a dissipative effect? Uh, if you're evolving under quench dynamics, like because you sort of motivate this from like um, uh, crystal like water temperature ice and things like that, that I would have thought kind of as like an open system. So you mean like as, as an effect only for the specific Hamiltonian or? Um... Uh, yeah, maybe for this particular case. Um, I think, yeah, um, you could, I think people are starting now for maybe theoretical to investigate for other con configuration. We observed it now in our system because it's naturally very easy in the trapped ion um, systems to generate this XY interaction with the, um, but I think they plan to look also on different uh, configurations. If you, Yeah. Uh, any particular reason to define the entanglement asymmetry using the Rennie entropies without, like, apart from the fact that it's easy to compute via shadows? Mm, yeah, I'm actually not so not so sure because I'm not expert in this uh, part of the the work. So, yeah, one thing is really I think actually right. Uh, it's uh, easy to extract via the classical shadows. So entropies in our case. That makes it very, very, very easy, I think. Uh, you said you didn't really look at um, the different uh, causes of the, the symmetrization, but did you at least try to discriminate between, um, you know, f uh, fast dephasing, slow dephasing, um, and, and have you thought about doing uh, dynamical decoupling and? Um, maybe in that way be able to um, you know, isolate different sources of your symmetrization and then um, see how that affects uh, the effect. So, no, we didn't look in this in more detail because we know that the major part of dephasing is really our laser and some magnetic field nose. So, um, not B field? Huh? Not B field? Yeah, yeah uh, also B field, yeah, magnetic field noise that I meant. So, yeah, maybe it would be also interesting to look, but for our system, we just wanted to show that it's uh, really an effect of the quench and not of some uh, dephasing and decoherence. So that was the major point of this measurement. More questions? Okay. okay. Thank you very much for the talk. Let's. Applause.